Hey guys, Melty Brain Bulbier here. So, I started Legion League with Cyclone Slayer, Impale, Crit, Two-Handed, Axis build. And while at the beginning I didn't really feel this build, but once I got enough attack speed, movement speed and decent weapon, the build became very addicting. But it is time to make a build guide video and move on to my next build. So strap in and let me explain how this build works, because there are quite a lot of things that needs to be explained. As always, check video description for timestamps, path for building, import code and other useful info. So first of all, two-handed weapons got a significant buff, melee got a full rework, Cyclone as well. Cyclone is now a challenge skill with very small mana cost. And the freaking AoE is huge. Impale got massive buff, Slayer got reworked and you can now actually use non-crit weapon and make a crit build. There are new auras, new support gems, but I think most people use very similar Cyclone build, which actually can be easily built as a Berserker, which is a bit stronger version, as a Champion, Gladiator or as a Slayer. Slayer probably has the biggest EOE, or at least potential to have the biggest EOE. But for League Start I picked Slayer because it seemed like a bit cheaper version and with Slayer I can ignore physical reflect maps and I'm dealing no elemental damage so basically I can roll any map mods most of the time I don't even look at the map mods just alk and go almost all of the items for this build are self-found or self-made and that is why I think this is a very good for league start and I guess for new players I was able to face roll all the Shaper Guardians easily and Shaper himself as well. And Legion fights aren't that difficult. Of course there are rippy skills from Legion like this red wall of death which by the way is supposed to get nerfed next patch. But other than that this is surprisingly smooth and powerful build. And for me that doesn't really happen very often because I usually make uh, of meta builds. A fun fact, more than 40% of all level 90 plus players are using Cyclone and almost 40% of all level 90 plus players are playing with Slayer. I think this may be a record in PUE history. So let's talk items. And for items is actually pretty straightforward. There is like one item that you need and then focus on getting good weapon. So helmet, body armor, boots, belt and gloves. Just try to get as much flat life and resistances. As for jewelry, you need either ring or amulet with minus total mana cost of skills. Legion enemies drop almost anything, including these kind of rings. So they are pretty cheap to buy and easy to farm for yourself. This one is not even that great because it doesn't have very good life roll, but it also does have flat physical damage to attacks. And the reason you want this mod minus total mana cost of skills is that your cyclone costs only 2 mana. So even on a 6 link cyclone, with one of these rings, your cyclone would cost 0 mana. And that is very convenient. You do not even need to worry about mana leech. You can just spin to win as much as you like. Now you may need some dexterity and intelligence on somewhere. So I got some dex and int on my rings. And my second ring is steel ring that I bought and crafted myself. Steel ring implicit already gives a lot of flat physical damage to attacks. And I rolled a number of flat physical damage to attacks, some life and also crafted some attack speed. On Amulet, Critical Strike Multiplier, Flat Physical Damage, Attack Speed, Critical Strike Chance, one or two of those mods plus life. And now the weapon. And I'm gonna start by showing my leveling items. You want big physical damage and decent attack speed. So at level 23 I was using this double axe and I kept on using it for over 20 levels until I got this at level 45. And I kept on using this for another 20 levels until I got this despot axe. So this despot axe has 353 dps and I kept on using that to farm low tier maps, to get some currency, to be able to buy Elder Void Axe. Void Axe is much cheaper than Val Axe because Val Axe is very high in demand and you want at least item level 77. And the reason you want Elder is because you can roll Fortify. Unfortunately I was unable to roll Fortify on this weapon but this weapon is also very decent. And this is 425 DPS, not counting the conditional attack speed. And I was using this weapon for quite a while until I got more currency, bought another Elder Void Axe and finally managed to craft a Fortify weapon. And the Fortify works as a pseudo 6 link which also means I do not need to physically 6 link my item and I can use it as a 5 link and the Fortify acts as a pseudo 6 link and this axe is 502 dps. And it's pretty easy to craft it, all you need to do is use Jagged Fossils and you just keep on rolling those axes until you get Fortify which also grants pretty big increase physical damage mod and depending on other mods you either craft flat physical damage mod, attack speed, critical strike multiplier or whatever else you can get. And I'm gonna tell you right now, 
multi-modding is not really worth it, using jagged fossils and just spamming them is much cheaper. Of course, if you want to min-max this build, you will have to, I guess, multi-mod, but it's pretty expensive and the damage difference is not gonna be that noticeable. Even if you get almost perfect multi-modded axe, in my case, DPS would only jump from 870k to a bit over 1 million. So it is less than 200k DPS increase, but the price is much higher. Instead, maybe try focusing on trying to 6 link your axe, because th this DPS is on a 5 link. Now, skills and links. My cyclone in the fortify axe is linked with brutality, impale, pulverize, and melee physical damage. However, rage support gem is slightly better than melee physical damage for clear speed because you also get movement speed. And rage support gem is very good for leveling because when you don't have very good DPS weapon, then rage gives way more damage. But once you get good DPS weapon, rage becomes less useful. Besides, ramping up rage stacks take quite a bit of time, so it's not ideal for big ass bosses like Shaper where you cannot ramp up rage stacks before fighting the Shaper. But for normal map bosses, rage works just fine. By the way, you you can power up your rage stacks, then swap the gem and still keep those rage stacks. They would still slowly expire one by one, but I believe you still get the benefits from rage. Now Impale needs its own separate segment, so maybe let me go over my other gems first. For my auras, I am using Herald of Purity, Dread Banner with Quality, Flesh and Stone, Blood and Sand, and non maxed out level Precision Aura. I know people get slightly confused how Flesh and Stone and Blood and Sand work together, so I'm gonna quickly explain that as well. By the way, their max level is only level 6. So Blood and Sand and Flesh and Stone give different effects based on which stance you are in. Using either of these two skills will also switch to different stances, instead of disabling the aura like the other auras. For the most part I am using Blood Stance because I get more damage, and because my Cyclone EV is so big I don't really benefit that well from the Sand Stance, and you can see the Stance EV visually around your character. The trick with Flesh and Stone is that you can actually link it with Maim. In Blood Stance by default, Flesh and Stone already maims enemies if they are in the Stance EV, and enemies maimed by Flesh and Stone take 15% increased physical damage. But if you link it with Maim, it will of course increase the mana reservation, but enemies will also take more than 15% increased physical damage. Basically you add the damage from Maim into Flesh and Stone, but I decided to not use that, I don't really have enough mana. And Herald of Purity isn't very good, so you want to link Maim to Flesh and Stone instead of using Herald of Purity completely. But Herald of Purity also gives you, well, meat shields. The Red Banner of course gives you a chance to impale, and previously I was using War Banner, but with some tweaking on the passive skill tree I was able to use Dread Banner and save some points. The quality Dread Banner also gives you more impale effect, which I'm gonna talk a bit later on. Next I also have Blood Rage, Ice Golem and Ancestral Protector. I did not have enough sockets for Val Ancestral Warchief, but if you can squeeze that in and you don't mind clicking yet another button, then definitely get that because that will also boost your damage quite a lot. By the way, Blood Rage is my only source of leech, but it also boosts my attack speed and while clearing maps, it also grants me frenzy charges. By the way, Legion enemies frozen in time do not grant you any on kill effects, including no frenzy charges. And before I got Fortify Axe, I was using Leap Slam, linked with Onslaught, Faster Attacks and Fortify. But later I got rid of Fortify to reduce my mana cost. Onslaught Support Gem is not really needed because I have Onslaught uh, from other sources. And you do not need Culling Strike because this is Slayer. Slayer gets better Culling Strike. And lastly, cast when damage taken setup, linked with new and reworked Immortal Call, Vulnerability and Flash Offering. And I think maybe I should make a separate video, but to fight against porcupines and other after death mechanic monsters, it's really nice to use corpse destroying skills like flesh offering or spirit offering or whatever other offering, because when you destroy corpses those spikes also disappear. For flask I went with the cheap and simple option, 2 life flask, greed removal, diamond flask, freeze removal, curse removal with sulfur flask and quicksilver flask. Lion's roar of course would give you damage, but it's currently a bit expensive and I kind of hate pushing enemies away away from me because of knockback. So this is just simple, cheap and efficient setup. Oh and oh, I almost forgot, I need to talk about the Impale. Impale can have its own separate video, but I'm gonna try to make it simple and short. With each Impale stack, you store 10% of physical damage, which you add to your damage on the next hit, and you can only stack 5 Impales if you're not champion, and of course if you don't have special watcher side. So if you have 100% chance to Impale, 
you can say that you're gaining 50% more physical damage. That is after you get 5 impale stacks on an enemy, which takes less than a second with Cyclone. However, there is so much impale effect on a passive skill tree and impale support gem. An impale effect basically increases that 10% of stored damage. So if you have 100% impale effect, instead of storing 10% damage per impale, you will store 20%. And in my case, I have so much impale effect that I'm actually dealing 103% more physical damage from impale. So for damage calculation, the simplest way is just to treat impale as more physical damage. And in Path of Building, which I included in the video description, I modified a flask to simulate this impale effect, because Path of Building does not normally calculate impale. So now let's look at the passive skill tree. As a slayer first I got impact node, I wanted increased AoE to help with the clear speed and leveling. Then I picked overwhelm node which allows you to play a crit build with non crit weapon, as in weapon that has low base crit chance. And only then started picking crit nodes from the passive skill tree. Then from merciless headsman for more damage against unique enemies and also physical damage reflect immunity. And from uberlab bane of legends. Once this stacks with onslaught effect, you become very fast. And it is so much more fun once you get Bane of Legends. So try to do your Uberlab as soon as you can. As for the rest of the passive skill tree, I did try to tweak it quite a lot. And I think passive skill tree has a lot of flexibility. But no matter what, you're gonna want to take Impale Wheel. Well, two Impale Wheels. Then enough life, enough crit chance. And then whatever else you want. But like I said, when you are starting for the first 50 plus levels, you do not need to worry about taking crit nodes. So just go for life, generate to hand it the weapon nodes and impale wheels. And after that, see what you need more. Get more life or more damage, more axe nodes. Also, do not worry about taking jewel nodes, especially if they take 2 or 3 points. In fact, jewel nodes this league aren't that good, at least for 2 handed builds. So, I think that's gonna be it. Like I said, passive skill tree can be pretty flexible, so just adapt it to your own liking, or just follow mine. So, that's gonna be it for now. I hope you have a good luck in Legion. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.